Welcome to Art for Justice in Conversation. I am Mahogany L. Brown, writer and curator. We are a community of artists, advocates, and allied donors disrupting mass incarceration. In this series, I'll interview artists creating a true justice system which keeps families together and treats people with dignity and compassion. Valeria Lucelli, born in Mexico City, grew up in South Korea, South Africa, and India, acclaimed writer of both fiction and nonfiction, author of essays, also won award upon award upon award, is a mom, has a beautiful uh, new book that uh, she's working on right now. Mitchell S. Jackson was born and raised in Portland, Oregon, West Coast represent, holds a master's in writing from Portland State University and an MFA from NYU where he taught. Uh, he also taught at Medgar Evers, John Jay College. Each one of the sections of survival, survival math starts with a, a cento, uh, so a poem made up of um, different uh, lines from other poets. And uh, what I did was took um, uh, lines from historic American documents or venerated documents that don't necessarily have to be historic. They were not meant for us, but that I, there was a way for me to kind of take what they had written and then kind of use it to shape these stories. Who are we? Hallowed African blood. Our fathers brought forth upon this continent, living and dead, sold as slaves, so far below the scale of created beings, altogether unfit to associate with the white race, subject to the jurisdiction thereof, unfortunate, uncivilized, do certain unalienable rights, privileges, immunities guaranteed to the citizen. Vote denied, abridged by one nation, indivisible, marked by every act, men, women, children, disunited. I'm starting something new and I am completely lost in form. The bigger idea of the project is that it's a sound, it's like a sonic essay, it's a sound piece uh, made up from a sound archive of the borderlands uh, that I'm, I'm recording, collecting with a sound artist, musician from Mexico, but also composed of, an, of a narrative essayistic kind of narrative, but that is choral. There's a series of, of voices of women who speak about the history of violence toward land and toward the female body in the borderlands on both sides of the, of the border. This piece is called Black Water. Um, and I'll just read a bit from it. Um, this is a story of color, of copper, a story of trade, accumulation of capital, a story of violence, mercury retrograde, mining, maquilas, mass detention centers, a story of dogs that bark and then fall silent, of bowels, the organ, the story of organ pipes, saguaros, birth and migration, tunas y coyotes, a story of a pinche rio grande y bravo and mercury retrograde over and over again, a story of plastic and textiles, alcoholism, cirrhosis, gore, rape, over and fucking over again, uterus interventions, femicide, genocide, slaveries, because it's never over, whatever they name it, bodies trafficked, drugs demanded and supplied, arms traded, your bank account, señores, señor presidente. So my question for you today, because you both opened up uh, sharing work that you're kind of fearful of, but also fearless, right? And in, in the way in which you say, I don't write poems, Mitch, but I, I started this book with a cento, right? And uh, Valeria's like, I don't know what this is yet. It has several bodies, right? How, how are you finding the strength to do that in this time of, of COVID-19? You're writing to push yourself. It's almost like, like ath athletics, right? Like you, you constantly want to push yourself and what you did before you gives you a kind of confidence, but it then also is no confidence at all because you also have to do it again. We're all having to reimagine our everyday, right? And 
if we have we've got kids I, I i live with my kid and my niece and so it's it's how we've had to kind of reinvent everything and how we do things and, and we've been one thing that i think helped us from very early in this process is that we were very very disciplined and and uh, are very risk this is a household in which we only women live we give each other those spaces that we know are sacred to our uh creative process and our moments and one thing i mean that COVID has obviously force us all to do is to really just like lower the volume and lower the speed of our everyday lives to a degree of almost sometimes what feels like immobility. I, I contracted coronavirus within the first three weeks and but that didn't take my mind off of what was happening elsewhere. I just didn't have the capacity. You know what I mean? So like how are you balancing that? I think trying to keep stay hopeful is is tough. You know, if you read, uh, you know, I, I keep thinking about Baldwin, like, you know, if you're even slightly aware as a, as a, as a black person, you'll be enraged. And so there's, there's all of these fronts on which to feel affronted. And so this is one of them. And I, and I think, you know, I was, I didn't do that much time in prison, but I did enough time in prison to know that there is no such thing as social distancing. And so I have constantly thought about, well, what if I was in there now? Like, what would I do? And I had such you know, no one thinks they're going to die from 15 months or, you know, no one thinks they're going to die unless you get a life sentence anyway. And even if you do, you appeal it until forever. So it's very sad to see this.